Love Talk Radio. Here we go. <laughs> it is another episode, and this is your host, Dr. Deb Carlin, here on Blog Talk Radio. I'm the K Factor, where K equals kindness, and the factors are all the things that lead to it. So, this is Sunday Soulfulness. No matter what your background or your belief system about God, the universe, Mother Nature, Buddha, whatever it is that you believe in, my invitation for you is that you allow yourself to believe in something that takes the weight of the world off your shoulders so that you are free to experience faith in this life across the board, to lift you, to free you, to allow you the space to know that it is not all up to you not to try to control the world, your destiny, any of that. Yes, <clears throat> free will, choices, opportunities, your intellect, that great mind of yours, and your feelings, your heart, that warm, wonderful heart, and that gut of yours that is your instinctive reaction to stuff. In my world, that's about faith, and the faith factor invites you right here, right now, on Soulfulness for Sundays to take a day for replenishment. How's that for lovely? You deserve a day when you allow yourself to back off of the work, to back off of all those tasks that really take your energy for most people Monday through Friday. And then Saturdays are a lot of catch up. At least that's the way that it used to be in our culture and in our world. 2020 has presented us with a very different reality. No matter what else you're doing on Sundays, I invite you to dedicate, allow, donate, open up space for a period of time that's all about your soulfulness. And we all have soulfulness. We have a million songs about soulfulness. And I invite you to participate in that here now. A good friend of mine who does Tuesdays with Tessa with me, Tessa, <laughs> is in Greenspan, gave me this book. And I love this book, 365 Days of Richer Living, Daily Inspirations, yeah, by Ernest Holmes and Raymond Charles Barker. Now, here's what's great. You can read this book year after year, and I do, and I did. And my other copy is so marked up, I had to go and get another one after like five years of reading through it because I go through and I make notations. Now, I want to introduce you to this, okay? So here we go. We've got the pages. I've got the date on it. No year, just the date. And for July 19th, which is what today is here in 2020, here's the theme for the day, okay? So I'm going to do a little read aloud for you. It's called I Have True Understanding. And it says, and this is from Proverbs, okay? 4-7. Wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore, get wisdom. And with all thy getting, get understanding. Oh, I really really like that because you have true understanding brings us into a place where we have wisdom wisdom comes with our experience wisdom comes with our belief and i invite you into knowing your own inner wisdom and trusting it because it's a beautiful thing but we have to really be clean about it we have to be genteel and i don't do the have to's very often but when it is so compelling to me to say that to you for your goodness and for your holistic, authentic, holistic well-being, I use those words. They're pretty strong because have to is, well, it's a little bossy, but I mean it lovingly. So here's what it tells us for the day. This is just a couple paragraphs. As all scriptures tell us, true spiritual understanding comes from perception of the divine unity back of all things. Knowledge is of the intellect. Wisdom and understanding are, are of the heart. Those who have had true spiritual understanding have always taught us of the unity of good. 
that we are one in essence with the spirit. They have told us that the unreal never has been, that the real never has ceased to be. And in quotes, I will not leave thee for nor, nor forsake thee. I will not leave thee nor forsake thee is the end of the quote. Our divine nature never deserts us. Like the prodigal son, we may wander into far countries of despair, but the divinity within us ever gently urges us back to the center of our true being. It ever reminds us of its presence. Now here's what the author says, okay? And I was just reading what they had scribed, and then here's their opinion. Today, I permit my spiritual understanding to penetrate everything which seems opposed to good. Back of all variety, I perceive the one cause, the one presence, the one purpose. Today, I align myself with this divine presence that runs through everything. I open the gates of my consciousness with enthusiasm and through recognition and acknowledgement. Permit the spirit of wholeness the spirit of oneness to flow through me. I know there is one God, one spiritual man, one perfect law, and one eternal life. Okay, some of you are going to love that, and some of you won't. But you know what? Here's what I'm here to do. I'm here to invite you on, on a Sunday to entertain the ideas that I put forth. And just to allow that these might be things that are actually really really good for you what is it inside of you that reinforces the idea that you have got an inner wisdom and a peace that you can tap into at any point in time my friend so when the world gets overwhelming when society comes crushing down on you and you feel angst, despair, depression, sadness, exhausted, overwhelmed. What do you tap into for you? That's the part that I want Sunday to be about for you is the, unrele the, the unrelenting release from that unrelenting stuff that comes at you. The world is a, busy, is a very busy place. The world in 2020 is exceptionally busy with news that's scary and activity that's limiting us. But when we have a soulfulness about us, when we do believe indeed that we are all in this together, this life, that in essence, we are all one, it changes everything. We're not alone out here. We're not isolated from one another. We need to find ways to come together in our humanness to touch one another kindly with gentility. You know, it's, it's funny to me because I had never thought about doing something like this on Sundays, calling a soulfulness. I used to do a series called uh, Soulful Tuesdays, and there were retreats at my home, and a few associates of mine and I had this wonderful gathering of, of people who would come and participate. And we thought it would maybe be a three hour deal and ended up being sometimes all day because people had a lot that they wanted to talk about and ask about in terms of their soulfulness. But I had people ask me, would you do this on a Sunday? You know, our churches are closed. Now I'm not a preacher and I don't pretend to be. I'm a practicing Catholic, and for me, that works. I want everybody to find what works for them. I will invite you into my practices, which extend far beyond Catholicism. I've studied different world religions. I have just found my sweet spot there, and a lot of it is because that's where my mother directed me. And even though I didn't always value it, when I did come to value it, it enriched my life. So I put my hands together every day and I say my prayers and I tell God, thank you. And I talk to the Blessed Mother as an intercession for me and thank her.
for her dedication and what she has done for our world, for our universe. Now, if that sounds a little crazy to you, are you a person who would prefer to talk to a different deity? Or is, is your belief system in nature, the sky, Zeus, whatever it is, the point is to let the weight of the world and of life off your shoulders and feel your groundedness in your soulfulness. Recognize the essence of your being is so beautiful, invaluable, and sacred and experience your grounding here through that soulfulness. You know, that soulfulness is right here. And I put my hands over my sternum, one on top of the other, as I am saying, yes, right here in the middle of my chest is where I reside. I can feel the beating of my heart. And yes, it gets generated by the thoughts that I have. Therefore, I wanna be very intentional, especially on Sundays about where my soulfulness is. What do I feel in the inner core of me that is really special, really important? What is my purpose here in this life? I actually ask myself that every day, and some days I think to myself, I have no idea. Dear Lord, please help me figure that one out. And you know what? <laughs> I swear I always get answers and it always drives me back to a place inside of myself where my faith is being exercised. My belief system is then strengthened. I then trust myself and trust my place in the world and trust other human beings to saddle up beside me on this journey of life and share it. And we share our joys and our sorrows, our challenges and our wins. Isn't that magnificent? Well, you bet it is. It absolutely is. Life gets rugged, rough. Do some wonderfully frivolous things, like put a smile on your face and look at yourself in the mirror and look deep into your eyes because, as we all say, through the years, through the ages of mankind, of humankind, you can see the soul through the eyes. The eyes are the window to the soul. So look at your soul every day and see who's in there. I promise you, in my training, in locked psych wards where I was getting my training, working on research, learning protocols, seeing what happens, and there were people who were just convinced that they were the devil incarnate. They had an illness, but even with those people, here's what I said. There is indeed good in you, absolutely. You are a human being, and we are all in this together. We all have blood running through our veins. We all have cellular activity that is magnificent. We all have the human experience that we share. So let's share it well. Let's share it healthfully. One of the things that I did several years ago is I wrote Build the Strength Within. And within Build the Strength Within, I talk about a variety of factors that help you identify your position in the world. Because I'm saying in here, I, I'm, I'm helping you create a blueprint for your life. So... One of, one of the things that I talk about in here is the faith factor. And I want to talk to you about that because it is so important to me. I learned the faith factor in particular from Dr. Herbert Benson, a cardiologist out of Harvard, who I was fortunate enough to reach out to when I was in graduate school and I was learning more about mind-body medicine, and that man had opened up the first mind-body clinic in the country. That's more than 50 years ago now. And he found that in the faith factor, and why he identified the faith factor, was people who have faith have a better prognosis in terms of their illness. Why? Because they take a lot of the pressure off. <clears throat> they put their, their faith and their confidence and their belief in a higher power 
that will guide us, that will bless us, that will keep us safe. So in terms of the faith factor, I put an assessment in here for you, but <clears throat> let's say page 194, the faith factor. And I have a whole section in here for you to read as you go through this. And in some of the things that I'm asking you about is when you have a faith, when you believe in something, what is it exactly? What exactly <clears throat> is it that you put your faith in? And I ask you five different questions in here in terms of your faith and your beliefs. For today, I invite you to explore that and to ask yourself, what is it that I believe in? Allow yourself the grace of your soulfulness and today be completely dedicated to it. This is your host, Dr. Deb Carlin, signing out for Soulful Sunday number three. Have a wonderful day. Seconds.